Hey guys, thanks for watching. This video is going to serve as a documentation update for my Niagara blood droplets and it's going to be covering probably the most frequently asked question that I get and that is how do I set up the collision filtering and how come it's not working on my project? So there is some documentation that exists already but admittedly I do skip a couple of the steps at the start and I think this has led to some of the confusion. So I'm going to demonstrate the issue here and show you guys quickly how to resolve it and how to get the collision filtering working in your project uh, in just a couple of minutes. So if I go into this demo level here and this was added in the 3.0 update and I shoot all of these mannequins down we can see that the blood particles it's spawned and I think you can see some issues already but as we start to walk past and turn around the issue becomes quite a bit more obvious with these decals sort of floating in the air here and that's definitely not what we want and that's definitely not how the particles are meant to work but this is happening because when the particles spawn they're coming out of the body then immediately colliding with it and if we hit alt and c uh, we can preview the collision of the capsule and of the ragdoll itself and if we click on it and we look at the collision presets we can see that by default it is set to block pretty much everything except for the pawns uh, so what this ends up leading to is the particles which by default will spawn on the world static layer uh, or the world dynamic layer they're going to collide with these guys and it's not ideal so what you need to do to fix this is go to edit project settings and then under engine we have collision and we want to make a new object channel and we're going to call that blood droplets and the default response we are going to set to ignore now the reason we set this to ignore um, you know you can set it to block it sort of just depends on your project uh, but in this case it is going to be easier for us to tell the game uh, what we want the particles to collide with than it is to tell you know the game what particles we don't want it to collide with so you know depending on your project uh, it might work either way it doesn't really matter uh, <laughs> as long as you set it up so we've set that now and if we click on an object and we go to collision we can see that we've got blood droplets and by default it is set to ignore uh, so this is what we want now this isn't going to make a difference for the particles yet because we have to set them uh, so by default when you're using these droplets and you drag them out you can see I have all of these exposed variables and you know for the most part that's how I wanted to keep the asset with everything exposed in here uh, unfortunately, uh, while you can expose the enumerator um, that has all of the collision channels in it um, and access it from a nice little drop down box, uh, you can't send it back to the Niagara system. Uh, or at least I haven't been able to figure out how to do it. Uh, I spent a fair bit of time tinkering with it. Um, so unlike all of the other parameters that we will set through, uh, through the blueprint, this time around you need to open up the Niagara system and it's important here because there's emitters uh, there's scratch pad. We specifically want the Niagara systems, the red ones. And worth pointing out, if you open these guys up, you're going to see these error messages. And these error messages happen because we've exposed the references inside of inside of the emitter. And the emitter. Let me start again. The variables that we've exposed and used inside here are also used inside some of the other emitters uh, that make up this whole system. Uh, so instead of having all of these duplicate and exposed variables and parameters, we call them in the emitter and then we set them in the system. So when you open the emitter, you see the error messages? Don't worry, that's, uh, that's normal. Um, that's gonna work fine because those references all exist inside these systems here. So when we go to user parameters, by default, well, this one's gone and switched the blood droplets on me already. Uh, it's not my first, not my first attempt recording. Um, but by default, yours is probably going to say world static or world dynamic. So, if we change this to blood droplets, it's now only going to collide uh, with the blood droplets layer. Um, so, if that's set to ignore, it's going to ignore it. And if it's set to block, it's going to block and collide. Uh, unfortunately you have to do this for each system that you want to use but the way that it's set up 
with the reference the first new object channel that you add is what this is probably going to default to um, so it'll either be world static world dynamic or this either way you're going to have to come in and check it in this case all mine have automatically assigned so if we click play and we test it out we can see probably what we'd expect there's no collisions everything is set to ignore and that's great um, because at least it's not colliding with the skeletons and the mannequins so let's select all of the static objects we don't want to select the physics objects because uh, remember they can move around so we don't want to end up with floating decals from moving objects uh, so we've selected all of the static objects in the map then we come down to collision and we simply change from ignore to block now when we press play kill our mannequins the decals are going to spawn properly they're not going to collide with the mannequins or the ragdolls or the capsules and it's going to leave you with these nice satisfying blood effects uh, like you'd expect and without issue and this will work on the walls and all of the other surfaces as well uh, it's just a matter of setting it up so like I said set it to block or ignore by default whatever's going to be easier for your project uh, but that's it basically uh, it's pretty simple and pretty much in all cases the only thing people were overlooking was the fact that you had to set the collision inside the system the system itself uh, don't set it in the emitter don't set it anywhere else it has to be this user parameter here uh, so yeah anyway I hope everybody has enjoyed the update uh, I hope this documentation helps and I've got some more things in mind but we'll see how it ends up so thanks for watching I'll be around and hey maybe I'll see you guys in discord bye